Hello, I'm here with Poppy King, founder of Lipstick Queen. Poppy, hello. Hello. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. So I just wanted to start with, um, tell me a little bit about Lipstick Queen. Sure. So my brand Lipstick Queen started in 2006 and I started this brand to be all things lipstick. So this is the perfect brand. If you've been looking for a lipstick and you can't find one you love, then Lipstick Queen is your brand. When did you first get into lipstick? Was it something you had from childhood? It was when I was around seven years old and I was playing dress ups with my mother's lipstick. So, you know, I was doing what, you know, a typical seven year old little girl would do is snuck off with one of my mother's lipsticks. And, um, and I remember putting on uh, the lipstick and knowing that it was going to change how I looked on the outside because I'd seen my mother put on her lipstick and that it changed how she looked. And then suddenly when I put on the lipstick, what surprised me the most was that I felt so different on the inside. I felt like I had been transformed into a kind of superhero version of myself where I was capable of doing anything. And so that's really when my love affair with lipstick started as, as opposed to other cosmetics was I know that other cosmetics can, you know, correct or conceal or enhance, but lipstick really transforms you. It makes you feel like you're in a different space and are capable of all sorts of opportunities and all sorts of possibilities. And I think that as a little girl, it just had this magical effect on me. And I thought, wow, with lipstick on, I can do anything. In terms of sort of lipstick icons, is it to old fashioned Hollywood that you look? Who, who would be your, your I think, ultimate? I think Marilyn would have to be yeah. the ultimate <laughs> in, you know, in terms of, uh, certainly for red lipstick. I think Marilyn is the, you know, is probably the ultimate in terms of femme fatale lipstick icon. She embodies just so much glamour and so much, su such a sense of spirit and she really is the ideal in glamour and she's certainly the ideal in lipstick. And you've um, been into lipstick for quite a while. Yes. But you actually had your first company was it called Poppy? Yes. When you were 18. That's true, which a long is, time ago Which is now. such a, it's a you know, young age to start a, a whole business. So can you tell us about that? What prompted sure. you to do it? Well, basically when I was 18, I was looking for um, very old fashioned style lipsticks from, from like the 1940s, sort of old Hollywood glamour. And at that stage, it was the early 90s and you couldn't find anything like that. Everything was very shimmery and very frosted and very pinky and corally. Mm. So I couldn't find any reds or browns or berries. And so when I finished high school, I'm not a makeup artist, but just a lipstick devotee, I decided to see if I could launch my own brand and I found a factory to make lipstick and then I found a business partner to finance the venture and I went from there. So it was really just almost like a giant school project except this time it was for real. Yeah that's and did you come across a lot of challenges starting up a business by yourself? I didn't come across so many challenges starting up the business. The startup was actually much easier than you would expect. It was more the challenges of growing the business that happened down the track. So that was with my first brand. I think it became so successful very quickly that I had trouble keeping up with the demand and knowing how to grow that business. Mm. So um, it, the challenges came a little bit later, but I think that can happen that, you know, there are two issues in business. One is that you don't grow at all, mm. and one is that you grow too fast. And in my case, we grew too fast. And so it's better of the two, but it's still a challenge. Exactly. And you've actually written a book on um, being an entrepreneur. Yes, I have. Is there um, sort of any tips that you would give? What's sort of the biggest lesson that, that you learned from starting that? Well, I think the biggest lesson about being an entrepreneur is to really make things simple, to keep it very simple. It's easy to complicate things, but it's very, very important when you're being entrepreneurial to keep it simple. And so sometimes our first instinct is, well, it can't really be this, this simple. I can't really think that this idea could work because it seems too simple. But when something's simple, that often means that you're on the right track. If something's too complicated, then it looks like then it, you may not be on the right track. So the more simple that you can think, keep things, and the more that you can keep things into small bite-sized pieces it's a little bit like being an entrepreneur is a little bit like if you look at a whole table filled with food and you think oh well how am I going to eat all that, that food but if you just take it one dish at a time then yeah. suddenly you realize <laughs> that you've actually managed to get through a full feast <laughs> one dish at a time yeah above everything lipstick seems to have a real emotional connection when it comes to cosmetics what is it about lipstick that you think resonates so much with us? 
I think the reason why lipstick is so has such an emotional attachment for women is we all have a story around it. You know, it's something that is very much a storytelling product, you know, and it's something that we all remember the first time we tried it or we remember the first time we saw our mothers putting it on or we remember the first lipstick that we bought. It's a very emotional product because it's one of the icons of being female. You know, there is, I guess, three icons of being female. There's handbags, shoes, and lipstick. What happens when you put lipstick on is it like, what happened to me when I was very little and I first tried it on is that it's not so much what it changes on the outside, it's what it changes on the inside. It does make you feel much more capable of doing things. You feel ready for the world, you feel ready to take on the challenges of the day. You know, so many women have talked to me about how um, with their lipstick on they feel totally capable of doing mm. things that they don't feel capable of doing without their lipstick on and you know the idea of that you put on some lipstick out you go out the door and you face your day you know and I've had women tell me all sorts of stories about kind of like the difference that lipstick has made in what they have felt is possible for themselves it's a very transformative product mm. it's changed its social connotations have changed from sort of the, the Roman Empire when it was a status thing all the way through to the 30s and 40s when it being a morale boost throughout mm -hmm. wartime. How, can you tell us a little bit about the, the charting of, of how lipstick has changed such a lot? Well, lipstick is very indicative of where society is at, you know, and sort of what the expectations are around women and kind of where women's roles are at. And so lipstick has sort of throughout the ages has gone through many different phases of being something that has been considered like a status symbol to something that is, you know, at times like in the medieval times was considered something that only kind of P women of ill repute war, you know, and so there's, there's been times when, you know, like through the, through the dark ages when lipstick was considered something that you didn't wear, and then times, you know, like in the 1930s and 40s, as you said, when it was used as a morale boost through the Depression and through war era, and then in the 1950s, I think it went very sort of sugary and was very sort of like, along with kind of like the whole idea of the house and the sort of the domestic goddess kind of, yeah. you know. And then it went in the 1940s, whereas in the 1940s it was the reds and very strong. So it, it really depends and you know, on what role women are playing and what expectations there are of women in society. Lipstick is a real barometer of what those expectations are and has gone through being in and out of fashion, but even when it's out of fashion, it's still such a subject of fascination. It's always fascinating whether it's in fashion or not. So you have chosen for me um, Saint Nude. Saint Nude for today, yes. Great. And how do we start? Is it about a lip liner? How do we how do we begin? Well, my feelings with lip liner is that it's, it's a tool, it's not a rule. So it's up to you. If you like wearing lip liner and you feel more comfortable with lip liner, then go ahead. But the truth is, is a great lipstick should really be a one-step process, straight from the tube. So I design all my lipsticks to be worn straight from the tube because if you feel you're doing too many steps to wear your lipstick, then that's not the right formula for you. The right formula for you should be really easy. So I would suggest that all you need to do with this one is yep. go straight from the tube. So straight in. Yep, straight in and just really putting on like one coat and then you can, if you want to, you can then go over it with another coat to really make it last and you've got the perfect lip. Great, easy. So you, you put the first one on and then would you recommend blotting? If you want to make it really last, you can blot with a tissue and then put another coat. Great. But again, as I said, the, the less steps, the better the lipstick. Perfect. And have you got any other tips for us? Yes, don't ever lick your lips. It's an easy thing to think to do when you feel like your lips are dry, but actually saliva makes your lips drier. And so please, please, whatever you do, don't lick your lips. If you want to moisturise your lips, find a great moisturising lipstick or use a lip balm, but never lick your lips. Okay. Um, and have you got any other troubleshooting tips for us? Sure. Um, a lot of women worry about lipstick getting on their teeth. Mm -hmm. So the best way to stop that from happening is to actually use your index finger pull it through 
and the lip colour that's come off on your finger, that's what's on the inside of your lips that gets on your teeth, so that'll stop it from getting on your teeth. Great. Another thing too is when you're actually looking for a lip shade, instead of applying that lip shade to the back of your hand mm -hmm. to see the Which colour, is what everybody does. Apply it to your index finger, to the centre of your index finger, because that really shows you much more of a true representation of what it's going to look like on your lips because that colour at the bottom of your finger is closer to the, your lip colour than it is on the top of your hand. Poppy, thank you so much for speaking to me today. It's been an absolute pleasure.